All right, weather fans, things are getting wild way up in the stratosphere right over the North Pole. It's starting to warm up there, and that's going to throw a real wrench in our weather patterns, disrupting the whole flow. What does that mean for you? It means some chilly Arctic air is getting pushed south as we roll into the end of the month and into December. We've got a cold blast moving in right now, and it looks like around Thanksgiving and the weeks after, we could be firing up that lake effect snow machine. Now, I'm thinking we'll see a bit of a warm-up around the first of the month right through the heart of the country. But don't get too comfortable because there's some seriously cold air just lurking to the north and west. We're starting to see the polar vortex actually split apart over the Arctic, which is a huge deal. That's sending a deep dip in the jet stream, a trough, right into the east around the 8th, 9th, and 10th of the month. This is coming from the European, oops, my bad, this is the GFS Extended Weekly Forecast. This model is taking us way out into the future, and wow, does it look chilly for the eastern United States. You've got that trough, that dip of cold air, sitting northwest of Hawaii, and a big ridge of warm air parked over Alaska. That's a classic setup for a cold east. But hold on, because the European weeklies start to flip the script, pushing that pattern back into the west as we get into January. And honestly, I think that's exactly what's going to happen. So here are the European weeklies showing that cold air parked over the west. Then, it slowly starts to creep eastward as we go through the middle of the month. And right around Christmas, it looks to me like it's going to be cold here in the northeast, with things maybe warming up a little bit out west. And, just because we're seeing a little bit of high pressure blocking over Greenland, which acts like a traffic jam in the atmosphere, I think the east is going to stay locked in a cold pattern as we head toward the end of December. Now, we're a long way out, but watch this. See how that trough? That dip of cold air starts to move backward, back into the west as we get into January. That could spell a major January thaw for everyone in the east. But hey, we are so far away from that, so let's bring it back to what's happening in the next couple of weeks. We're looking at warm, above average temperatures for the upcoming week. Maybe a quick shot of cool air for parts of the northeast, but overall, it's pretty mild. But get ready because here comes the cold. It's gonna start pouring into Western Canada first. This wave of cold is going to drag some snow eastward with it and also down into the mountains as we move into Tuesday and Wednesday. We might even see a little bit of snow try to tap into the moisture as the system leaves the East Coast. Now, at this point, I have to say, I think the GFS model is getting a little overexcited with the snow totals, more on that later. But we are definitely looking at one decent shot of cold air from the European model. This version, the AI, has been the most aggressive, showing some truly bone-chilling cold. It shows it plunging down the eastern side of the Rockies, which totally makes sense. Why? Because when you get a powerful push of cold air like this moving south, you get an extreme warm-up right out ahead of it. And that temperature clash is the perfect ingredient for a low-pressure system to spin up, right along that battleground boundary. There's a lot more to this story, and a setup like this would mean some crazy warmth farther to the east. Eventually, this whole pattern does begin to shift eastward. Even the long-range weekly models are starting to pick up on it. As for snow, looking way out through all of December, I mean, if you look at all the different model simulations, what we call the members, there are still a ton of chances for snow on the table, even if one or two of those simulations aren't showing it just yet. All right, let's zoom in and start with the main GFS model run to kick things off. As we go through the rest of this week, we've got rain moving into the Ohio Valley, while that cold air is still bottled up way over Alaska. Although it is starting to get colder there, temperatures are definitely dropping, and they've got some snow flying around too. Meanwhile, a low pressure system is spinning just off the east coast. On the back side of that, we're going to see some cooler temperatures filter into the northeast, bringing another decent shot of chilly air. It's still feeling warm across the southern plains and down into Texas, but check this out. An upper level low, which is basically a storm spinning high up in the atmosphere, is cruising through the southwest. That's going to bring some much needed precipitation, with some rain and snow possible, especially in the highest mountains. It might even drop some moisture into southern Colorado as we head into Sunday. We could see some heavier snow across parts of British Columbia and the Canadian Rockies as that big blob of cold air really starts to dive south. Some of that snow is going to try and spill over to the east of the mountains, so heads up in Edmonton, down to Calgary, and even into eastern Montana. You folks might see a little bit of snow, but I really think the jackpot, the heaviest stuff with this system, is going to be farther north in Canada on its backside. We're talking about a good bit of wind and snow blasting through Saskatchewan and eventually into Manitoba, and right behind it, even more cold air gets pulled south. Okay, this forecast is starting to look pretty solid to me. 
This will be for Tuesday of next week, with rain surging back to the north and east, into the Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes, and finally, the northeast. We will have to keep a close eye on the northern edge of this system, where we could see some messy mixed precipitation. Then, once this low-pressure system really starts to get organized and wrap up, as it moves in on Hudson Bay, we'll see some wind and snow on the backside in North Dakota and Manitoba. But then, on the southern side of it, oh, the GFS model does this all the time, you guys. Seriously, when I was forecasting every single day, I'd see this pattern on the GFS and think, yeah, right, we're probably not going to see much snow on the back end of this thing. Even though yesterday's model run was trying to cook up something big, today it is really backed off. That is a classic GFS move, in my opinion. But what I do think is certain is that we turn cold behind the system once we get to Friday. That's right, Black Friday is looking cold around the Great Lakes. I think we're going to have the lake effect snow machine cranking at full force. And then another powerful system comes plowing into the west. This one could bring more wind, rain, and snow. And this is the one that would be tied to that true Arctic air we saw in the European AI model. Now, remember, what we're looking at here is the GFS. And it looks a little bit different. I would even argue it's probably not the best model to be looking at this far out in time. But even so, you can clearly see that Arctic air plunging south and crashing into a big surge of moisture from the Gulf. And wherever those two air masses collide, folks, we could see some very interesting weather. I think as we head into the first week of December, well, we'll just have to see how this all shakes out. It's shaping up to be a cold pattern, at least for the northern United States, while for you in the southern states, I think you'll stay relatively warm. Now, Texas might get a glancing shot of cold, but the southeast looks to escape any massive Arctic blasts overall, at least in this time frame. All right, let's take a closer look and walk you through the next couple of days. We'll dive into the west first and then work our way east. There's that upper level low we talked about, swinging through the southwest, dropping some snow in Arizona and Colorado. Some of that has been coming down a little heavier in parts of western Colorado, too. They haven't seen a lot of snow there this year, so this will be a welcome sight. Okay. Here comes the next system into the northwest. This is the one that's going to push east of the mountains, bringing some snow toward Edmonton and Calgary. And again, this whole thing just keeps sliding east. So we're probably looking at a couple of inches out of this. And then here comes the cold, bringing snow showers to the mountains of Wyoming and into parts of Idaho and Montana. Just a little bit of snow here. This is not a huge snowstorm for you guys, but it is definitely going to turn colder. And the snow levels, the elevation where rain turns to snow, are getting pretty low in the Pacific Northwest. As we head into Wednesday, the 26th, I don't know if we'll see Thanksgiving snow all the way down to sea level, but wow, that is some pretty cold air. And then, believe it or not, it actually starts to warm up a bit right before the next storm arrives. We flip right back over to rain, and then look at this even more snow for the West as a really active pattern sets up. Now, here's a peek at your temperatures for Thursday across the West. All right, let's keep this train moving and head across the country. We're heading east now, where we've got that storm system that's been sliding across the south. It's going to continue pushing into the mid-south and eventually the mid-Atlantic states. Things will be drying out across Texas, making for a relatively quiet weekend there. But we still have that upper-level low to deal with. That's the one bringing that snow we mentioned to Colorado. It's also going to bring rain back into Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, and north into Nebraska. From there, it tracks east into Missouri and Arkansas by Monday morning. And don't be surprised if we see some thunderstorms fire up on the southern flank of this system. But right behind it, here comes the real cold air rushing in. And once again, the GFS model is trying to produce some snow on the backside of all this. To be honest, this particular solution just looks too cold and too weird to me right now. We'll have to see what future runs show, so stay tuned. But I am confident that there is another shot of cold air coming in behind this. Now, here's a look at your temperatures heading into the weekend. We've got warmer air moving into the Great Lakes, though it will still be relatively chilly, especially in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. It's going to be another warm weekend across the south, with temperatures in the 70s and even some 80s popping up way down in South Texas, and 50s stretching as far north as Montana. But don't get used to it, because this is not going to last. Eventually, we are going to see that cold air blast in. These are your high temperatures. By Tuesday, we're talking back below freezing. By Wednesday, the 40s are back in Texas. You can really see how that cold air just shoves its way all the way south. But down to the south, where overnight lows will be dipping into the 30s. But don't worry, things warm up pretty quickly as we head toward Thanksgiving. That cold air, though, is just lurking off to the north and west. 
We're talking single digits and teens, not very far away at all. All it's gonna take is one little tap into that, and I'll tell you, the European forecast model is really trying to drag that cold air south. So much more to come on that story. We've got rain moving north and east as we cruise through the weekend. A little bit of snow could make an appearance in the northern parts of New England. Otherwise, we dry out, but watch for another light chance of snow moving through parts of southern Ontario and into Quebec. Now, this could bring some heavier snow to the mountains here in the northeast. For everyone else, it's dry skies across the mid-Atlantic and down into the south. Now, our next real shot of rain starts to ramp up just as we get into the peak Thanksgiving travel season. From Tuesday into Wednesday, rain will be picking up steam from Michigan all the way down into Ohio, Kentucky, and Tennessee. As we get into Tuesday afternoon and evening, some stubborn cold air will be trapped in the northeast, so there's a definite chance for a little bit of a wintry mix to get going that could linger into early Wednesday morning before warmer air scours it out of there. Then, it's more rain for the mid-Atlantic, and some of that could come down pretty heavily as we head into Wednesday afternoon and evening. The cold air diving in behind this is where it gets interesting, and I have to say, the GFS model is being a little bit aggressive with its timing. It's calling for a flip to snow early on Thanksgiving Day. We're talking early Thursday morning next week. It's painting snow in Erie, Columbus, maybe even Cincinnati. Honestly, I'm not so sure. To me, this looks a little strange, a very classic GFS model move. But behind it, look at the lake effect snow machine firing up off of Lake Erie, Ontario, and even off of Lake Huron. Really, almost all of them are getting in on the action, except for Lake Michigan, where the wind direction, or what we call the fetch, isn't quite long enough. This pattern continues with a cold, swirling flow into the northeast. So, where do we go from here? There are a lot of questions, but it's shaping up to be a pretty stormy start to December. Let's take a look at your temperatures. There's a big dividing line on Friday, with chilly 40s and 50s, even some 30s to the north of this line. South of it, it's a completely different story, with 60s, 70s, and even 80s across Florida. Temperatures are on their way down in the northeast, cooling off a bit, and as we look ahead to Sunday, your temperatures are looking actually not too bad. We're going to warm up across parts of the Midwest, getting back into the 50s and 60s. But don't get too comfortable. The cold will eventually arrive. I think even if we don't see the snow, this is going to be a significant front that pushes east right through the holidays. And then, once we get toward Friday and Saturday, it's going to push all the way to the Gulf Coast. It'll say goodbye to the 80s and 70s and knock you back into the 40s and 50s for highs. Florida, however, is still holding on to the 70s. It's beautiful there, but a cool shot is on the way, and that serious cold is just lurking the further north you go. There's a warm surge ahead of that next system, and you can kind of see how the GFS model is just all over the place with your temperatures. This is a really tricky forecast to nail down, folks. But don't you worry, I'll be on it for you. 